we have been talking about prayer. We've been describing prayer, going through prayer. We've been walking through prayer. We've been um, going through different parts of prayer. And we start with prayer by defining prayer as just simply communication with God. When I was preparing this message, I, I was talking to God, Lord, if prayer is communication, that means prayer must, if it's communication, that means we have to take into consideration, consideration the communicator and the communicated. In other words, we have to, if I want to speak to somebody, I have to take the person into account, into into consideration. So, in other words, when we're praying, and we talked about this last week, we may, which means we must have different types of prayer because different types of prayer, some of them might be for the person you're talking to or might be for you. If I want to talk to my wife and I want to beg her to do something for me, then I entreat her to do something. That is called supplication. That's prayer of supplication. If I was speaking to my wife and I tell my wife, hey, listen, I, I need this. I need your help. I need you to do this for me. I need you. To, that is just asking and petition. That is a prayer of petition. When I just look at my wife and say, you know, you just look beautiful today. I just love you. I'm thankful for God, for you in my life. That is just prayer of adoration or worship. That's not to her, obviously but to God right that's prayer worship and adoration if I if I realize that 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 we're going in different directions and I want to bring have a come to Jesus conversation with her I say Lord my wife this is not what we said we agreed on this one that is a prayer of um what would you call that prayer of uh well it doesn't really happen in that place a uh, judgmental prayer because you don't really have judgmental prayer with your wives right with your spouse right but my point here is this that in other in different ways as we communicate we regard prayer as communication we all have to adapt that to our lives and different things were different phases of our lives and 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 adapt the different types of prayer when reaching out to God and and I know this because in Luke chapter 11 when Jesus was talking to to the disciples of prayer he was teaching them he said he said pray like this now I want you to understand that what he said was just a template it was not a recital so it wasn't a this is the right way and the only way it was a template to say Pray this way, my father. In other words, and I talked about that, which means it starts with what? Intimacy. You cannot have a true, honest, direct communication on set except when you have intimacy with them. When you reach out for intimacy and I get intimate with God, that's what allows me to love his presence, to pray to him all the time. I don't think anyone talks to the the guy that bullied you in school, right? if you had the bully, I don't think you talk to the bully right now. There's a guy in my school, and when I was very young, that when I was in school, that I was wishing we met after I left school. The guy was very short, but he, he bullied every junior student when I was in school. And I was wishing that I found him after I grew, because I was very young, very small when I was in, what's the GSS one? Seventh grade. I was very short, very short. I am still short, but I was shorter. Okay, I was so short that um, I, I was very short. And I, I, I was praying one day that when I become his age, that I would meet him somewhere down the alley, in the alley. Just, 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 just so that I can show him exactly what it means to feel or to be on the other side of the coin, right? So uh, best believe it, I'm thinking about someone, I'm not thinking about him, I want to call him to see how you're doing, right? Because he's not the person I'm going to call how you're doing uh, about. So in other words, when we are talking about communication, <laughs> we're talking about... <laughs> When we talk about communication with God, right, we have to build intimacy. We have to know the person. We want to we have to, intimacy allows us to want to talk to the person. Now, I've talked to my wife like multiple times today, and sometimes it's just, just checking on you, and, and, and how are you doing? And that's what happens with intimacy, right? You get to just verify and just check up on them, and that's what God is asking when he talks about, when Jesus said, hello, he said, my father in heaven. We talk about my God, my father, my Lord, my, my dad. And being able to get to that level allows you to be free enough to pray. Then he said, hallowed be your name, which means your name is holy. And it also means that we will praise you. And so when you look at the prayer of in Luke chapter 11, God was giving us what Jesus was giving the disciples, a template to pray. How do I know this? Because you realize that they never repeated that prayer anywhere else. Yet they prayed. They never repeated that prayer. You never see, you know, some of us, when, we, when we, we, we don't read the Bible, we don't pray and something happens and you say, 
pray and say, our Father who art in heaven. You're, you're repeating the template. You're not repeating the, you're not praying. You're only repeating the template that Jesus did. And none of the disciples ever repeated that template. They prayed, but didn't repeat the template. Now, I'm sorry, they didn't repeat the prayer as a template. They prayed in accordance with the template, but they didn't repeat that. So we've been talking about two different, about prayer, types of prayer. And we started with prayer of inquiry last week. Um, prayer of inquiry, and then we went down to prayer of intercession. Just a quick recap, if you were not here, prayer of inquiry, we said, is when you're asking for information. And we talked about the story of, of, of David when he was running to different situations, and he had to ask God for information. Should I go? Should I pursue? And will I overcome? And because of this, we have to understand that it is better to spend a few minutes, a few hours in the presence of God than to run into things without asking God. Because if God does not go with you, then you have no backing. But when we want to go into a place, you have to go and ask God, is this what you want me to do? So that you can go in the way that he prepared ahead of you. He says, I will prepare you a place. He says, I will go ahead of you. In other words, he says, your foot will not stumble. If your foot will not stumble only if he is with you. But when you go on your own, you are what I called on your own by yourself. And there's no way you can now, you can always ask him, he'll be there. But when you go on your own without God, you are bound to enjoy, to experience things that God is not in uh, and frustration. But when God tells you to go and you see challenges along the way, you can call back to him and say, you told me to go. You knew this was here. What do you want me to do? And we saw the life of David where he went and he said, Will Saul pursue me? Will these people hand him over to hand me over to them, to him? And they said, Yes, yes, yes. He picked up his luggage and he left the place. Some of us are overstaying our play, our, our welcome, because we last heard from God to go. We never inquired what next. Somebody say amen. May that not be you in Jesus' name. And then we also talked about the prayer of um, prayer of intercession. And I said, every believer must be an intercessor. You have not started to pray until you have started to learn about intercession. See, intercession is when you don't pray for yourself. It's when you stand in the gap for people. When you stand in the gap. The scripture says, whom shall I send? As I said, send me, here I am, send me. It says, how can, it says, the Bible talks about the fact that, 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 that we need to learn to be in the middle, to be able to pray. It says in First Corinthians, First Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, with my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I will hear from heaven and I will heal the land. God is expecting every one of us to be intercessor. Let me tell you why. Because intercession makes you, if, if you want to build your prayer life, be an intercessor. And I'm not saying like, not those contracted intercessors. I mean, find somebody to pray for. Call someone, Brother Larry. I don't know what you're going through, but I'd like to pray with you if you would share with me. And be in, but carry a burden. Because what happens is this. Even if you're praying for yourself and you see God begin to do things in people's lives, it encourages you to know that God is a God that still hears and still responds. So you have to, and here's the thing about this. If you pray for somebody else, you have no emotional attachment to it. And we have no emotional attachment to it. You are, it's purer because you're not looking, have you done it yet? Have you done it? You're just, you're, you will labor more. You will spend time in the place. If it's yours, you'll be like, I prayed three times. Maybe God does not. You have no emotional attachment. So it, it energizes you. It makes you much more prepared to say, Lord, let me tarry in your presence. Let me tarry in your presence. It gives you ability to, to say, if you want your prayer life to be longer, to be, to be growing, pray for somebody. Just call a friend. Brother, I don't know what you're going through, but I just feel I want to join you in whatever you're going through. Oh, my goodness. It will lift. And when you start hearing testimonies, oh, man, you will realize how real God is. Somebody say amen. And so we talked about prayer of intercession. I'm not intercession. I'm not going to go through that tonight. Tonight, I'm going to talk about a prayer of worship. Prayer of worship. And then many times we always look at this prayer of praise and worship. We always look at this and think, is prayer of worship really a prayer? It is. You see, every time you worship, you're praying. But you may be praying. You, every time you're praying, you're not always worshiping. But every time you worship, you're praying. Because what's prayer? It's communication with God. And here's the thing. Worship has nothing to do with you. Worship is all about Him. The one thing I don't always, I don't like to miss is praise and worship because that's the only time I give God something that is not about me. 
The message is about us. We're encouraging each other. The testimonies are encouraging each other. The announcement so that you know what's going on. The prayers so you know what's going on. The, the Bible study is so that you can be equipped. Enriched. But the one that we give to God, there's nobody that comes here and says, and we pray, and we praise and worship, and we turn to him and say, and praise and worship him. Why? Because he cannot be somebody. It's for God. So if it's for God, your whole experience of church must start with praise and worship. Because that's when you come to give God something that is not about you. And you imagine many believers are selfish in that nature. You know why? Because you come when it suits you. You leave the house when you feel like leaving the house. Come to church when it suits you. And you say to yourself, they're just doing praise and worship. Like it's a fill in the gap moment. Now let me go for me. That is a selfish motive when it comes to that. That's the one you, not knowing that your praise and worship is a song. Your praise and worship is prayer. When I say worthy are you, O oh God, you are adoring God. Something that you would not know. Because when I say prayer, you, you go, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for everything. I need this one. You go into your own needs. But praise and worship allows you to give God endless praise that comes from the depths of your heart. It lets you appreciate God. I love worship. I heard Benny Hinn talking about this one. He said, pressing into the presence of God. He said, he sits in the place and he stays there. Plays worship music and he just stays there removes everything of his mind not what he wants and just makes it about God so within 15 to 20 minutes he presses into another realm he said he begins to bawl begins to cry because he cannot imagine standing before a holy God because when you worship God helps you see yourself as he sees you and in that moment he begins to break you he begins to break you because there's no way you're praying that makes you break, get broken because you're telling God what you want. But when it comes to worship, he begins to break you. He begins to open. You begin to see him in a different way. And you say, no, 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 no. You know what happened? Elijah, Elijah I'm sorry, Isaiah stood before God in Isaiah chapter 6. I believe chapter, chapter 6. And, and says in the year that, that King Uzziah died. He stood there and he said, uh, when he saw God in his glory, he says, whoa, am I? And God says, I'm a sinner. He says, I'm a sinner. And God told him the cherubim come and put something on his tongue and put a stone from the hot flame of God's altar on his tongue. And he said, and he was made clean. A worship gets us into, and that's worship. Why? Because it gets us into God's presence. And when you get into God's presence, you begin to see yourself the way God. You know, he says, for my eyes have seen the king. <laughs> and I do on the midst of people of unclean because I'm an unclean. I'm undone. Woe is me. Because when you're in a place where God is elevated and exalted, you cannot feel big. You have to feel small. 24 elders in heaven begin to bow down because it is impossible for you to stand in the presence of God and be standing. You will see the equality. We take God for granted a lot of times. You will see the inequality. What we see and we feel like we're there when we're praying. I'm a prayer warrior. But we get to God's presence and you're worshiping. You see the inequality, why God is great God. And you cannot just stand but just bow down. You, it forces you to worship. Somebody say amen. And that's what God is asking of us. So in this prayer, you're not asking God to do something for you or to give you something. You're ask, not even asking for direction or dedication, dedicating your life or whatever you feel God has called you to do. In this, you're saying, Lord, I just want to praise you. I just want to worship you because you're God. Just because you're God. Just because you're God. My wife called me the other time. I thought I was not feeling, I was feeling a bit strong earlier today. And she called me and she goes, can I bring you something? I said, no, no, I, I'm, I'm fine, I'm, I'm okay. Um, and then she calls me again, how are you? I just checked up on you. I'm okay. And then she calls me again, she said, I just wanted to tell you, I love you. I got to the point, I was about to say, hey. Like, I'm really okay. Like, the last time you asked me, I'm really okay. And, and, <laughs> and that's me, right? That's me. Imagine if we adored God that much and say, hey, dad, how are you? Hey, hey, dad, is there something somebody else is not doing that you want me to do? 
Is, is, it, is there some place that's missing that I could just be a plug-in? I don't even mind being a, a plug-in. Just tell me, where, here I am, send me. What would you want me to do? What, what, who would you like me to speak to today? See, the relationship with God is not some mechanical thing. It starts with intimacy. What are, how are you feeling today, God? How do I know this? Because God spoke to Adam like, the, like that. He just spoke to Adam like that. He said, listen, it came in, and Adam was like, hey, wait, Adam, where are you? Where I hate because I was naked. Who told you were naked? Oh, the woman he gave me ate the fruit. Did you eat all the fruit of yes? The woman he gave me. And then it was just a conversation. If that was a conversation that was recorded with cause of sin, what was the conversation? How do you feel the conversation of love would have gone? So prayer of worship is just because you are God. When you pray, you say, Our Father in heaven, He said, Hallowed be your name. This prayer is not one that asks, but acknowledges. And sometimes, acknowledging God is more powerful than asking. Because it speaks to the person, not what the person can do. Acknowledging Him speaks to the person, not what the, what the person to do, what you want the person to do. So it, 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 my, here's my question I, I wrote down there. I wrote, I wrote my question for myself as a study. I said, if God refuses to answer what I want, would I still pray? Would I still worship? Now, every one of us have got to get to that moment. Because that's why you ask yourself, why am I Christian? Is this so that I can get all I can get? Or is this so that I can give all I can give to God? Because listen, if he never did anything good for me, he paid the price that I don't have to be as one who is hopeless. There are many on the streets that don't know what's happening next. I'm not talking about the meals. I'm not talking about, I'm saying they're just on the place. They're hopeless. They have no idea. They're not in their right minds. They, they, they're confused. They don't know where they're going after this. The question of God is, if God... Does, chooses not to answer, would I still serve him? You know, David says, though he slay me, better still, I will what? Serve him. He doesn't have anywhere to go. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, even if he chooses not to save us, we are not going to worship any other God. Daniel says, listen, they said, don't pray. Daniel says, listen, I'll go do the same thing I've always done because before you came with your laws, there was a God that was above the law. Though he slay me, yet will I still serve him. We are, all of us must get to a point where we say, it's not because of what I get. Because here's the thing that, uh, that affects many believers. We get to a moment, we don't get what we want, we backslide and say, this God is not real. And here's my thing, why would I show you my true self? If you're not ready to go all the way with me. So here's God saying, I, I want to, yeah, I, wanna, I love you. I love you. And I've done something. I saved you. I brought you in. And you're like, Lord, give me this. Give me this. Otherwise, like, like it's a contract. Like, like some of us were mobster, you know, but a boom, but a dim, you know, you give me this, you give me that. Settle. Is that, if that's, if that's not it, that's it. I'm going to live. If you don't do that, like as if he owes you something. I heard Billy Graham preaching and he said something. And I, that's true with me. Man, that changed my mind about, about faith. As simple as it is. He said, many of us come to these places. He said, the chair you're sitting on, you never came to the chair and examined, can it hold me down? He said, when you walk in the car, you never ask the car, is, it, is everything put together? You just walked into the car and you bought the car and drove a car. When you came in, you sat down. He said, God, Jesus is not asking you to start to break him apart to see if it's true he can save he says just have the same faith you had on a chair in a car just walk in believe i am believe i save then when you know that then you start to see what i can do i can know about a chair i have faith the chair can hold me but until i sit on the chair i will never know how far the chair can go I know my car can drive me, but until I drive the car, that car looks good from outside, but until I drive the car, I would never feel what the car, the luxury in that car. Same thing with God. Until you can believe, you have to just have faith. God is, I believe God, and I stick the step. Then when you do that, then you start to see sides of God that would never have been revealed until you said, yes, I do. Hallelujah. So faith, worship allows us to... To show God love, reverence. And I can put, I put it here, to worship is to show a lot of love, 
Reverence, adoration for a deity, which is God. This is the definition of worship. Uh, worshiping for him for who he is, not what you can get. Um, you know, a couple of examples of this in the Bible is prayer of worship appears. And in Luke chapter 20, when, when, when Jesus was born, the Bible says, Luke chapter 22, verse 20, when Jesus was born, the Bible says, the shepherds returned glorifying, praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard as it was told them. So they went back glorifying God. Glorifying God. Not because of anything. Remember that leper, the 10 lepers in Luke chapter uh, 17, the 10 lepers when one, when, when 10 were healed and one came back to say thank you. Not because he wanted anything more, but he just came back to say thank you. There's such, you know, God wants the things. It's Martha, he says, this, enter his gate with what? Thanksgiving and into his courts with what? Praise. He puts an embargo to say, listen, you get to have access into places you cannot go in my presence or you will not get to do that until you have worshipped and thanks. Thanks get you to outer courts, into, into, into gates. Worship gets you into the courts. You see, one thing is this, you would never get into the holy of the holies until you have passed through the courts. So when you get worship, you find that God begins to show you more and invite you in. Come up hither. Come up here. I have more to show you. Children of Israel, even when he had to speak with, uh, when God had to speak with Moses, he said, you come up. I want to show you something. It's amazing that he could have done it around the corner of the mountain, but he took him deep into it. 40 days. I'd be like, God, send me an email. Because God believes that before, you see, God, God reveals himself to those who choose to spend time with him. He says, draw near unto me, and I will draw near unto you. He says, if, you're, if, I, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you would ask what you will, and it will be given unto you. So God is not interested in drive through. So there's a lot of times, how many people like croissant here? Yeah. Croissants. Okay, that's okay. You all do. So the croissant you eat most of the time, they have, it's not, it's not, it's, 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 it's fix on. Okay, it's, it's, it's not croissant. It, a real croissant takes about three days to make. And that's even if you have, you have the Levant. Levant is like, it's like, um, it's like the yeast that's used to start. It's like a starter. That's about a day. Once you get that starter, then you now go into there, put butter. You have to wait. And three days. When you eat real croissant, you will, you will never want to eat the Starbucks croissant or the Starbucks croissant again. It's one way you know it's golden. I mean, please. I, I know somebody that makes real croissant in this church. And they have my contract. It's possible for us to be testing the outer parts of God, but not test the real thing. Look like is not the same as is. And some of us, the Bible says we have to thirst for who he really is. And that's what worship does. You may know some semblance of God because you are near the place. But if you're not in the flame, you cannot get the heat, the, the, the impact of the fire. And that happens. We come to church often and then we see some small miracles and we say, that's it. And when we don't get it, we feel like God is not there. But God is saying that is, that is just small. That's not everything. That's not even, that's so tiny. God was, I was talking to God a long time. I said, well, why is it that some people have some great testimonies and, 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 and some impact? He said, those who spend time with me will see a different side of me. There's some doors you're going to get the keys to. Until you have stayed in the house. There's some storage locations you will never get to know. Until you stayed in this house. In my office, there's a, there's a, it looks, it looks very small. And in one of the rooms, there's another closet that is much small. But that closet, if you come to my office, come to the area, you'll see everything to be small. That's okay. 
But there's a closet in that. There's a door through that closet. The door itself is small. But when you open that door, you realize that there's a whole new place on the back end that you never knew existed. But you see, you can come around. You, there's no way you spend time with. Until I show you, you would never see it. And the interesting thing about this is this. That's the same way with God. We see a little bit of God. And we think it's enough. But God says, I've got, you feel that's enough? I've got more on the back end. If you just starry in my presence. And that's where many of us need to continue to grow. Somebody say amen. So why, um, you know, um, in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing but through prayer. In everything by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Um, in other words, our thanksgiving is sharing our requests. We don't even know. Lord, I thank you because you're able to do this. Lord, I thank you because I'm, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm thankful because you've already paid this on the cross. I'm thankful because you've, you've made me rich. I'm missing it yet, but I'm thankful. Thanksgiving is what births more. What births more. If you, as a person, <laughs> appreciate Thanksgiving when it's given, imagine what God appreciates. We were created for that reason. So, why prayer of worship? Um, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, Hebrews 13, 15, and I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Why prayer of worship? Hebrews 13, 15. It says, Hebrews 13, 15. It says, therefore... By him, let us what? Let's read together. Let us what? Continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving things to his name. That's what God calls us to do. Why? Because it calls us to do that. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, I'm a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Who is what? Set forth to what? To proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his mother. He has nothing to do with what you want. He's already done it. He says, I separated you so that you can give me praise. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. It says, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created what? All things. And by your will, the all exist and were created. You receive the glory because you've already done. Not what you're going to do. You know, when Jesus was giving thanks in John chapter 11, he said something that says, Lord, I thank you because you have heard me and that you hear me. I thank you because you heard me. The prayer at that time was not prayer of God, do it. It was a thanksgiving for what he believed he had already received. So thanksgiving, don't think thanksgiving and, and, and worship and, and praise or praise. And that's, that. Don't, don't think that that's only a sidebar. It's very powerful. Sometimes when you've prayed in God and you are trusting God for something, just come back here and during praise and worship, just begin to roll on the floor and appreciate him for what he, his word has said he would do. So, you know why? Why do we worship him? Because he loves to be worshipped. Two, because it says, he's, um, I put them, he craves it. Because the Bible says he's enthroned in the presence of his people. I found that if you read through the scripture, every time praise was going on, there was a recognition or acknowledgement by God. Every time. When David was dancing and was praising God, oh, God says, you know what? What is that thing you want? What is, what is, what is that thing? Michael was saying, why would, you, why, would you, why would you just belittle yourself? And he said, listen, he put me here, not your father. I know why, because I'm, he's already done it. Where I am is because of him, so why on earth would I not give him praise? And then... I put down here, what's the other one? 
We were created for this. I read that in Revelation 4, verse 11. We're created for this. All things were created. And then here's the thing. I love this part in Luke chapter 19. So here's the story about Jesus. Um, it was a donkey coming in, and they were shouting Hosanna. And people were like, wow, would he, does he know what he's doing? He's making people shout Hosanna. And, and he said, listen, if they don't praise me, then the rocks will cry out in their place. That's to tell you how important it is to acknowledge God, to worship God. Let's go to Luke chapter 9, 19, verse 40, and verse 39 and 40. That tells you how important it is. And you know one thing? He can't, it's very tough because God can say, they have to praise me, they have to praise me. They, out of their own volition, start praising him. And God, Jesus was like, nah, this, is, this is what should happen. Because if they refuse to do this, what is about to happen is so great that the rocks will cry out. But he answered to them, verse let's 39, let's go. It says, uh, verse 39, it says, um, 39, it says, And some of the Pharisees called to, him and, uh, called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I can never shout in Hosanna. And he goes, you know who I am. What I have done. And he didn't have to brag or say anything. But he said, he told them, he said, but he answered and said to them, I tell you this, that if these should keep quiet, the stones, wow, will immediately cry. Now, he was not going to make the stones cry, but because the heavens and the earth seen the king of kings coming down the, the, the angels and if, if angels were allowed to come down i can imagine them saying hosanna but he said if they stop doing this the rocks would not hold it themselves they will have to give god praise and if rocks will have to give god praise and he gave us breath and lungs then why not us So, so, so we immediately cry, cry out. So you have not seen anything. So better them before, because if stones start crying out, we all leave this place. <laughs> just let them do what they have to do. Why, how do we do this? We do this by taking time to just tell God you love Him. That's how you pray. Pray, praise, and worship. Tell God I love you. Praise Him, worship Him, sing praises. Now you may not be a great singer like um. Sister Pat, uh, or like most of the choir members, but that's okay. Because he never called all of us to be singers. He called some of us to join the company of singers. And we company of make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It is a sing brilliantly unto the Lord. It says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So even if the best place you can sing is in your bathroom, that's okay. You're making a joyful noise. Even if the, you make a joyful noise. Just do something that comes from your heart. And then here's the thing. Tell him how great a job he's doing. Psalm chapter 8 verse 3 says, If I, if I look at the heavens and the earth and the, and the firmament and all you've created, it says, then what I wonder, what is man that you're mindful of him? Every day the sun ref can never, can never refuse to shine. To shine. The sun can never. You understand what I'm saying? There's, there's no amount of how many people hate the sun. The, the sun does not bow down to them. So my future is guaranteed because the sun has to bow down to God. My future is guaranteed because the sun has to show up. Because the sun has to show up. And the moon has to respect. Give room. The sun has to give room for the room for the moon. That cycle creates day and night. That cycle creates seasons. And that cycle, and many people make money because of the sun refuses to stop. And the moon refuses to stop. And so, when I think about all that, who is man that you're mindful of him? And nothing you can do. How do you do that? You can also play worship music. Fill your house, your heart, your, heart, your house with worship music. And you know, it's, it's, you know, one of my wife's biggest dreams is that she wanted a place where we can have 24-hour worship music in the house. Until I called Best Buy to come and do it. And when they told me the bill, I said, love, we'll buy Alexa in every room. <laughs> we tell Alexa to play it in every room. And Alexa has a way of linking every single thing together. So I'll play it in room one, two, three, four. And, but she's always up playing. And in my room, there's always going to be music at some point. At any given time, even if it's on our phone. I was just sharing this evening. I said, we have this, the whole house has got this 
this music, YouTube music, uh, not YouTube, what a music we paid for that was going to be just music all the time and nothing else, just music. Just music. Set, because music sets the environment. It's a place God wants to dwell in. It's like nesting in a home. He broods over our worship. It's like a bird that is about to, to, to nest and the, the nest is made well so that when the bird gets in, it's, it's, it's comfortable. Complaints and argument create spikes in the nest. God can't settle there. Amen? So he said, if we don't do it, that's the other reason why we have to do it. No, well, actually, um, how do we do it? He said, play, I said, play music and never miss praise and worship. I put down never miss praise or praise and worship. And let, let me go to another one here. Um, and I want to talk about the prayer of petition. Prayer of petition. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in all things to prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. What is a petition? I want to bring this very, very clear here. A petition is a, and I've got lawyers here that can hold me accountable. Uh, a petition is a formal written request or requisition um, that typically once signed by many people appealing to an authority with respect to a particular case. In other words, making a case for a change for a desired result. Now, Let's put that down for a second. In other words, petition is when you make a case for lawyer. Am I? I'm good. I researched so that I won't be put on the microscope. So I'm good. Okay. So it's, it's a case. It's making a case. Now, here's the thing about petition. If you follow every guideline for, I'm watching his face because his eyes can throw me off here. If you follow every guideline for making the petition, you will be confident enough to stand and require the petition. In other words, if they say, let's give me a petition. A petition to say, a petition to, let's use the word, you want to stay in the United States, right? A petition that, to file something to stay in the United States. If you follow what the rule of the law says, you don't go back and beg, please let me go. You take that and say, your word says this. Here's my petition that tells you that I am entitled or I need this thing because I fulfilled everything on this thing. Why is that important? Because a lot of times, many of us pray supplication, which is entreatment rather than petition. Petition already gives you access to it if you would follow what's in there. And petition allows you to boldly come before God and say, here's a Jesus Christ died on the cross. That I am free. He bought my price. So therefore, I have this thing because your word says so. And when you get some petition and you fulfilled everything, please tell me if I'm wrong. Did I miss something? Okay, good. I, I just, please, I, tell me if I'm wrong, okay? Huh? I, thank you. Thank you. If I go before them... And I put the petition before the judge and said, this is this. And I've obeyed everything. Now, the scripture says, now a judge can be difficult, right? And looking for another thing you should go do, file, file, uh, number I-780, whatever that one looks like. But the Bible says in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, it says, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the Father will give the Holy Spirit to them? It says, how many of you will your son ask for fish and you give him a, a, a um, snake? Will he ask for bread and will give him a stone? In other words, he's saying that, listen, even when people deny, it says, can a mother forget what? A suckling child. It said, even if she does, I will never forget you. So the promise we have is greater than what we can ever imagine or record in earthly reverence, references. In other words, what we see in this world, what we see evil around, God is the total antithesis of that evil. In other words, he says he cannot deny his word. God is not a man that he should lie, not a son of man that he should repent. He says, have I not said it? And will I not do it? Have I not spoken it? And will not come to pass? In other words, if he says this is it, 
take it to the bank. Nothing can change it. Heaven and I will pass away. But a jot or a tittle of my word will never go without fulfilling what's been sent to do. Then he even said where the word of a king is, there's authority. Listen to this. The word travels and makes somebody heal whole. How much more when you have it written? Say, so this is what your word says. You will approach God with confidence. So prayer petition gives you the confidence to approach God to receive of it. Petition is not God let beg you. Let me, let me beg you to please do it. That's supplication. Supplication is when you're entreating and you're begging. Have mercy upon me. But petitions where you know what's written and you finished and you've written there. Then you go and say, Lord, it is written. Your word says it. And it says he cannot deny his word. It says something that is only constant in your life that can never be denied. It is the word of God. So when you capture a word in his book, when God says, I shall, you shall. Let me tell you this. If we ever deny one, then we should take one word. Then we should take our Christianity. Then Jesus did not come. Then Jesus' words did not come the way he said it. Then Jesus' word, Jesus did not do what he said he was going to do. Then we should take our Christianity and be like everybody else. But that's not the kind of Christianity we have. We have Christianity because we believe. We have Christianity that believes that God is and his word never changes. He has said it and he will make it come to pass. So this word cannot be broken. This word cannot be broken. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard. All powers belong. This word cannot be. So if this word cannot be broken, not one can be broken. Then we should approach this word with such confidence. That has got all the keys to become, to allow us to become all we're created to be. I'll give you this. So prayer of petition is communic communicating with God and asking him for something. Because prayer of petition is a prayer with boldness. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Matthew chapter 7 verse, verse 8 says, for everyone who asks, receives. Him who knocks, the door is open. He was six. Fine. He says, ask my father anything in my name. He will give it to you because I go to the father. That is prayer of petition. In, in 1 John chapter 5 verse 14, it says that, ah, what's the beginning part of our scripture? Help me out. 1 chapter 5 verse 14 and 15. It says now, watch this. This is why I said there's a boldness, right? Now this is what? Confidence. I, man, goodness. I, I don't know if you understand this. This is the what? Confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he what? Hears us. And watch verse 15. It says, and if he, if we know that he hears us, then whatever we ask, we know we have the what? That we have asked. Biggest thing about us was we stop at the place of, oh Lord, you know, I don't know if you are really, you know, if you have mercy, or we complain and we cry. When it says, spend a little bit of some time, find out what it says, what it says here. What does it say? Okay, that's what it says. Then take this one, according to his will, raise your petition and ask him to step in. Confidence. We can ask God to give us strength for our daily lives. We can ask God to help us remember. We can ask God to, for financial need. We can ask of anything if we know what His Word says. If we know what His Word says. The Bible says you ask and you receive not because you ask a means to do for your own word, to gratify your own pleasures. In Mark chapter 10, I want to bring something here. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. There's always a question that says, if God, in, Mark chapter, in Matthew chapter 6, I believe verse 5 or verse 6 or verse 7, the Bible says that God knows what you need of before you are ask. Now that's true. Why does he tell us to still ask? Why does he need us to still ask? He knows what you need. And this makes me understand that just because I need something does not mean, does, it, it's a big thing about need. A need shows me that it's something necessary that I, I need. So I can look outside and say, man, 
He needs a tan. Well, maybe not him, but he needs. You can see someone say they need a tan, but does he want a tan? I can see someone walking down and say, man, he needs a car. But can he see? Does he need, does he want a car? So God knows what you need of, but he wants us to ask what we want. Because he will not act contrary to the will and your desire. He will not act contrary to what you desire. In other words, you cannot, you know, if you trusted God for a, uh, a Rolls Royce and you get a Volkswagen, many of you will not come back and say, thank you, Jesus. Because you'll be like, that's not what I asked for. Lord, where's my Rolls Royce, right? Because it would almost make you not want to appreciate God for what you've received. Which is God is also needing us to ask. What is obvious in your life does not convey what your desires are. He still wants you to articulate your needs. And that is the petition. He wants you to, because if you can articulate that, you can create and ask for anything. You know the secret of it. If you always give your child everything without them asking, it becomes, um, you know, we say this in, in Africa, you're spoiling them, right? Oh, you know what? I think you're going to need a, 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 some set of Jordans when you're five. Boom, there's Jordans. You think you're going to need that one when you're 10. Boom, that's that one. At some point, they will turn around, will turn at you and say, I didn't ask for it. But when they, this is what is important. When our, our children ask for something and you give it to them, they begin to appreciate it and you feel fulfilled that you've met what their desires are. And if we know how to do that as parents, how much God just wants to say, what do you need, my love? What do you need, my love? I need that one. Yo, you, please, not please, you, Give it to him. And then he gets it. It's like, oh God, you answer. Because every time we get a response, it elevates our faith, increases our ability to give God thanks. But if we get things without just asking, and begin, without asking, it, gives, it makes men get to a point of self, I made it myself. Because God blesses and then we take it for granted. So here's the thing. All right. Um, one of the stories that stands out to me is, in, is in, in the book of Mark chapter 10. And this is a story of blind Bartimaeus. Many of you know them, know him. He was blind and it, he, he, because he was blind does not mean he had a desire to see. Let me tell you why I say that. In Acts chapter 1 or Acts chapter 2, the peop, uh, Peter and John were going to the temple. And there was this, I don't know if it was a blind or it was a leper that was there. Huh? It, was, it was a lame man that was there. And he stood there and Peter said, look at me. He, the Bible says he thought. He raised his hand thinking they were going to give him arms. And at that time Peter said, silver and gold I have none. But what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Acts chapter 2. Brother, rise up and walk. Now watch this. When Jesus saw blind Bartimaeus, he came to him and he said, Son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus walked up and came to him and said, Bring him over. He came around and said, What would you want me to do for you? <laughs> I, so if, if, if I, I don't know if I can say this, but you know, can, some people might think, let me play the trump card here. Some people might say things like, <laughs> they would say things like, duh, what do you think I want? Who is blind here, right? Who's, who's, who's not seeing who here, right? And, and you know, it's amazing because that's a moral, a lot of times, <laughs> that's how we relate with God. We don't articulate our needs. We don't say it. And you're in the presence of God and like, God, God. And, there's, and you're, the presence of God is there like, do it. Do what? And we just, we take the presence of God for granted. 
And that's why we took time to talk about prayer because prayer allows you to know exactly where the missing link is. He finally got access to God. And God asked him, Jesus asked him, what would you want me to do? You finally get before God and God says, you know, give it another one. John, Genesis chapter 13. No, chapter 13 or 15, one of the two. Um, Abraham had just given um, Mekishedek a seed, a tithe. And, and God was impressed with him. I think it was chapter 14. I can't remember. And God was impressed with him. And God said, man, you... And God showed up to him and tried to speak to him. And then Abraham said, yeah, it's true. I know you said all that, but look at me. I don't have a child. You see, he communicated his needs. Didn't God see that? He knew that. So just because you think God knows does not mean he, you're, abdic- you're, you're removed from articulating your needs. God wants us to still articulate our needs. That's why it's important for you to pray. Because you're going through, there's not any God knows. When you're talking about the people of Israel, he said, said, go tell them their cries have been elevated to me. It wasn't that, it was their desire to see a change. He said, now I'm going to act. So when you come to God's presence and say, Lord, you know this is going on. Lord, if you don't sit down and make prayer important, you can be in the, in the, in the ocean and be dying of thirst. Because you have not articulated what you want. And that's why coming to God's presence is not something we should take for granted. Because every time God is here, he would, every time we gather, he is here. And when we know that he's here, then we need to key into whatever is going on. Don't fold arms and wonder what can they be saying. Because God might be speaking to you right there. Somebody say amen. And so, you know, I said what's obvious in life may not convey what your desires are. Um, Not having a wife does not mean you want to be married. And other people are praying for you to be married. And you're like, (laughs) feeling bad that you are not working does not mean you want a job. Prayer is how God allows our desires to be communicated to him. It's, it's one of those moments when he's eager to listen and for us to know that he hears us. Because it's him saying, hey son, what do you want me to do? Hey daughter, I, I hear you, what do you want me to do? Now, here's the thing. We need to know what we want so that we can ask confidently, boldly, honestly, and with expectations. Because we need to know that he hears us. Petition is to pray. Now, petition prayer is one that um, has to be according to what the rule book permits us to do, right? If the petition is in the book, then take the petition in the book. I remember many years ago when I was just learning how to pray for the sick, I, I, whoo, man, I looked into every part of the scripture that says God listens and God will answer prayer. And I, before I even said God healed the person, whoo, man, it was my prayer for my famous pimple. I raised the book. I said, Lord, your word says, call to me. I'll answer you. Your word says, he sent his word. I read that book until that word became second nature to me. When it became second nature, then I could boldly say, Lord, I'm no longer reading it. I know your word says, ba, 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 ba. I know your word says, ba, ba, ba. This was so therefore, Lord God. Now. And then we get to a point where it says in John chapter 14, ask anything in our name and he will give it to you well, if you're going to do a prayer petition i want you to know this you have to pray in the name of jesus that is the first that is the signature at the bottom of your petition because it says whatever you ask in my name that's what the father would do that's the signature at the bottom of the petition if we do not do that another thing i want you to know about this is this that you have to know because it's that it's what gives you access, what opens the door for God to step in. And the other thing I want you to also know when we talk about uh, petition is the fact that many of what you're going to be asking for has been paid for by the blood. So you're not begging for it. You're asking that your entitlement. It says that your eyes of understanding will be open, be enlightened, that you know what is the inheritance of the saints. And then you go back to 
um, we need to ask boldly. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes, here's the thing. Sometimes I pray. I ask. I've asked. I've asked. I've asked. And I do not get answers. One of the best, most logical things I, I read, I saw, was the idea of a traffic light. You see, sometimes when you get into traffic light, when it's your turn, you see a green light to go. Sometimes you see a yellow, which means what? Caution. To some of us, that's... <laughs> it means caution. And then you get the red one, which means stop. And I believe that sometimes God just shows us the green light to say, it's there, it's there, it's there. Sometimes he says yellow, which means, hey, slow down. Not now. Sometimes it says red. And it says, that means, hey, stop. I'm, I'm not ready to do that. Now, a lot of times we think, why would he show us red? Because somebody across the street is, how do you break in the, how do you cut, cut through the lights? Like it's, is running the wrong light. And sometimes we'll think, Lord, why aren't you doing it? But it's like, no, no, no. See, better than what I'm about to give you is your safety. Better than what I'm about to give you is your life. Better than what, better than what I'm about to give you are things you may not know. My daughter looked at me the other day. She goes, Dad, maybe you should start teaching me how to drive so that when I get older, when I get ready to get my permit, I'll be there. Well, I said, well, it is with yellow light. I'm not going to give my daughter a car. Not now. Why? Because she's not ready for it. I heard a story of a man that gave us a son. First car out of college. Very wealthy man. Gave his son a Maserati. And the son, two months later, wrecked it. And I said to his son, I came back, and the next time he, he walked up to his son and said, you know what? That's not okay. He said, maybe because it was a smaller car. So I gave him a G-Wagon. Well, three months later, the son wrecked it. So I asked a friend and said, hey, um, my son keeps wrecking the car, and this is expensive. He said he would always wreck it because he doesn't know the value of a car. And so he told him, he said, well, don't buy him a car. And that son, this is a high school, this is high school. So the man told him, I'm not going to buy any car. So the son decided, well, if you're not going to said, if you want a car, you need to walk up for yourself and, make, and get the car yourself. So the guy gets a car, goes and starts to work in one of his um, um, donut shops or something and save money. After about a year, finally bought a $2,000 car. Man, that car lasted many years till he finally graduated college to buy another car. Whatever gets given easily and cheaply without a value, we don't appreciate it. So sometimes we look at God as saying, listen, listen, I, I could give you anything I want because I'm able to do it. But that might not be the best thing for you. So when you look at an answer prayer, let's hear the thing. When you don't get the answers you want, it does not mean God did not answer. Sometimes no is an answer. Not sometimes. A lot of times no is an answer. And you can come to my house and you'll hear many no, no. You want down no, no. And they know how to push the buttons. You know the answer is going to be no. But you ask anyway. So I will say, I like your confidence. <laughs> I like your boldness. No. Because I can answer myself too. <laughs> I look at this and I say, that's the same way we ask God things. Yeah, he wants you to ask boldly. Yeah, he's like, you know what? You, man, you really ask me for a mountain. No, because he said, ask me for the what? Nations. Man, you ask the nations. No. Not yet. And that's okay. But he answered still. Because we don't get what we want, we think he didn't answer. And that's not the case. So let's talk about three things here. So what's some practical things when we feel like it's tough and you're not getting what you want? Or you have a, a red light moment. Number one, pray with people. Just continue to pray with people. You know, Because we get into a prayer of agreement. Number two is pray boldly. Be bold about it. I've told you about that. Number three is that pray incrementally. In other words, pray um, a big prayer, a big prayer for healing. But also learn to pray 
for the small things. So pray big. Don't, don't limit your prayer. Pray big. You know, you've often heard, shoot for the stars. If you don't, if you shoot for the moon, if you miss it, you land on the stars. Pray. The Bible says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. So the limitation is not what he can do. The limitation is what you can think. So think. Pray. If you're trusting God for healing, pray. Because if he chooses to answer, then that's the one. If you get my, my green light, that's what I'm going to get. And here's the other thing. Pray consistently. I shared us the other day that many times we pray sometimes and we give up. Pray consistently. Pray like you're laying dominoes on the ground. Because the Bible says, I will sow in the morning, I will sow in the evening. I'll never know which one is going to be, whether this or that or both alike. Pray. Keep stacking your prayer. The Bible talks about the woman who was asking that judge for help. And he, he, kept, he goes, even if it's because I want to sleep well, let me give her what she wants. Keep stacking the dominoes because it takes one more, I receive it, one more thanksgiving, one more Lord help, one more ask. That would tip the domino and everything you've been laying up begins to come right before you. Let's rise up on our feet. So now we talk about the prayer of what? Praise and worship. And then we talk about the prayer of what? Petition. We need to confidently be able to ask God for things. He is your father. He will not deny you. I want you to bow down your heads and begin to ask God. Those things, whatever it is that you, you've, you've, you just, you, you heard about it. We just talked to God. Say, Lord, I, I'm grateful that we've heard your word tonight. I want you to talk to God. Say, Lord, I want to start walking in boldness. I want to start walking in understanding. I want to start walking in revelation of who you are. I want to start responding to you. Lord, every way that I have just acted on myself and acted on, and been afraid to ask you, I'm, I'm so sorry, Lord. I, I want to never limit you in my life. I, I, I want to align with your will. I want you to just begin to speak to God and pour out your hearts to him and ask him, Lord God, God, help me learn to see you the way you, you want me to see you. Help me learn to ask big, ask great. This limitation is in my asking. Father, help me see beyond where my own mind limits. Open my mind of limitation. Expand my limited mind. Expand my mind. Expand my mind. Help me think like you think that I may see like you see. And help me recognize what you want me to do. Help me at every given time never miss out on it. Lord God, I receive that in Jesus' mighty name we pray.